friends, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Alana. I know my shelves look a mess, ignore them. I'm currently going through books that I want to take in my move and ones I want to leave at home. So my shelves kind of look like a disaster, but that's okay. We're just gonna pretend that it doesn't look like this. But I wanted to do a recent reads for you all because I've actually been in a tiny reading mood the past couple of weeks and I actually read a good number of books which I'm so excited about. So I wanted to go ahead and film that um, and talk to you about them before I read any more hopefully. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dive right in. So the first book I read was Beach Read by Emily Henry. Um, I gave this book five stars. And this book is about two people, Augustus and January. January um, has just experienced loss. Her father died about a year ago and she just found out some news about him and his life that's made her really question everything about her life. And so she decides that she is going to uh, move out to his lake cabin to hopefully be able to finish her book that she's put off writing for two years. She's kind of on her last leg so she's just kind of stuck and she sees Augustus who ends up being her neighbor who is this guy she went to college with who is also a writer who is experiencing writer block as well and they come up with this interesting idea where they're gonna switch genres um, because they're both stuck and so Augustus who usually writes like fiction slash realistic fiction I guess I don't know how to describe it is gonna write romance which is what January writes and she's gonna switch and do like actual fiction I don't know but overall I really enjoyed this book I thought it was funny I thought it was a really good read um very emotional definitely talked a lot about some serious stuff but overall still a really good read it definitely made me an Emily Henry fan Augustus was one of my favorites you also learn a lot about cults in this book which I thought was interesting I definitely recommend this if you're looking for a good read I will say though this is a romance but it's not I wouldn't say it's like a rom-com or anything it's a lot more serious than the cover portrays it to be so definitely go in with that in mind because it does talk a lot about uh, grief all right the next book I read was people we meet on vacation by Emily Henry so I basically got it on an Emily Henry kick and read her first two books and I I am now sure that she's an auto buy author. I'm definitely going to be buying her next book when it comes out next year. But this one is about two friends, um, Poppy and Alex, I believe his name is. Yeah, they meet in, I think, undergrad and they're like completely opposite in personalities and lifestyles and everything like that. But they somehow click and form this really intense friendship. And so from there, they start this tradition where every summer, no matter what they're doing, they drop everything and go on a trip together. And something happens between like, when they first meet and then when this book starts, where they just stop talking to each other for a good minute. And so Poppy currently lives in New York. She is a travel blogger, basically. And she has like her dream job, her dream apartment and everything like that. But she realizes she's not happy and she doesn't know why. And so she thinks back to when the last time she was happy and she realizes it was when she was on vacation with Alex. So she comes up with this big plan to go on another summer vacation with him. And everything you can think of goes wrong. I enjoyed this book. I think I gave it four stars. I didn't enjoy it as much as I did the first one because that one just made me so emotionally connected. This one was just as good and I really enjoyed um, Alex and Poppy and their friendship. I really liked watching the friendship bloom from basically nothing where they thought they were both weirdos and didn't think they would ever get along to like having a genuine friendship where they knew each other so well. I definitely recommend this if you like the friends to lovers trope. Like, I feel like Poppy was just so quirky and I love the fact that Alex kind of just accepted her for who she was. So yeah, definitely loved this as well. Next, I read The Bridge Kingdom by Danielle L. Jensen. This was a recommendation from Erin, Booked and Busy. She thought I would really like this and I actually really did. I gave it five stars. It's about a girl who was raised in the middle of a desert with her 11 other sisters and they were raised to 
one day marry the prince of this rival kingdom in order to assassinate him. So this book starts off with a bang. It's like the night that someone's going to get chosen to, to uh, enact this plan that her father has basically put into effect since they were born. And it starts off with her killing her sisters. <laughs> so she's the one chosen. And from there, it's kind of like action-packed, but like super uh interesting story so she like goes and she meets the prince and they obviously don't trust her because their kingdoms are rivals but like there's a connection there um and i really loved getting to know laura who's the main girl i loved her perspective and getting to know her but i also loved aaron's perspective who's the who's the male lead and hearing his thoughts too um i was definitely tense throughout a lot of this because like you want them to be together, but you know she's there for ulterior motives, so you're kind of just like, what's gonna happen? Like, how is he gonna find out? How's everything gonna go about? Um, but I definitely found this intriguing. This world is a set of duologies, so this this is the first duology. And there's another one that I think takes place from one of her brothers, and then there's another one that takes place from his sister, and I want to read the one with the sister, so hopefully I can read that soon. Next, I somehow got on a weird romance kick, and I read Happy Singles Day by Anne Marie Walker. I think I gave this four stars. I thought it was kind of cute. It was about this lady who uh, is single, and she's been single for a while, and she decides to celebrate Singles Day. <laughs> and decides to take a vacation and she rents a room from this uh bed and breakfast and uh unknown to her is that the room that she rented was put up against the owner's will so he didn't really want to be hosting anybody um he is a single dad who is still dealing with the grief uh, from losing his wife and he just wants to be left alone but his sister instead decides to finally put up a room for rent so that he can keep the bed and breakfast because they are struggling so I thought this was cute I only gave it four stars because in the beginning the guy kind of just rubbed me the wrong way um, with how he approached getting to know the main lady when they first meet she like obviously doesn't know that she rented this room without him knowing and so when she walks into the house he immediately is just like very nasty to her <laughs> and i just felt like it was unwarranted because it'd be one thing if she actually knew but she didn't know like she didn't really she just kind of just happened to be the innocent bystander and everything that happened in the sister's plan so i just kind of felt like it was kind of rude the way he went about it especially because he kept calling like in his head he kept calling her like a stuck-up city girl and like all this kind of stuff and i was like i mean you just met her and like granted i know you're mad that like you have to give her this room but it's not her fault so i don't really see the point in being so like disgusting um towards her but that's just me but i feel like he made up for it in the end a little bit so four stars next i read the lemon sisters by jill shalvis um i think i gave this one four stars as well i enjoyed it for the most part it's about two sisters who are estranged and the oldest sister uh ends up coming to the youngest sister and asking her to basically take over her life for like a week or two because she's having a mental breakdown <laughs> so uh the youngest sister obviously accepts and like goes back to her hometown which she has avoided for years and um it's kind of about the sisters mending their relationship but also them working on their relationship with their significant others. Um, the wife and her husband, just there's like a disconnect happening and she is struggling with that. And then the youngest sister, um, she had an old uh, high school sweetheart, I guess, who something happens and they become like estranged and don't talk anymore. And so it's kind of about those uh respective relationships getting mended too um overall i really liked it i thought it was a fun read i thought it was sweet and quirky but also had its really fun moments and it's really serious moments and emotional ones as well um so i really enjoyed it i will say trigger warnings for this one because it 
does talk about um, a miscarriage and the loss of a child. So that is in there as well. But yeah, so definitely recommend if you're looking for a fun summer read, if you like sister books. Okay, so next I read the second book to the British Kingdom, which is The Traitor Queen by Danielle L. Jensen. So this takes place obviously after the first book, so I'm not going to go into details about everything that happened, but I really liked um, this one as well, and I believe I gave this one five stars too. Um, I think it ended on a really good note. It was still open-ended, but it was ended enough for their story that I was pretty satisfied. So yeah, I'm excited to read more books by this author. Alright, back to my romance kick. I read Fixer Up by Tessa Bailey. I gave this four stars. I really liked Georgette. Um, I thought she was such a quirky character, but I related to her at the same time, especially with her being the youngest in her family and nobody really taking her as seriously as she wants them to. I definitely relate to that because I'm the youngest in my family and sometimes I feel like nobody takes me seriously sometimes. Um, so I get that. But I liked the relationship she had with Travis, who is the main love interest in this, because I felt like it was um, natural and like they really had a good connection with each other and they could just like kind of go off of each other's like personalities, if that makes sense. So I really enjoyed this. I um, see why everybody <laughs> was raving about it like a year or two ago when it came out. So. I'm hyped for this and I think Tessa Bailey is a new autobi author because yeah. all right the next book I've read is another Tessa Bailey book and that is her newest one it happened one summer I gave this five stars <laughs> this I loved this book so much this is what made her an autobi author for me because this was amazing to read I found it so funny but so good and sweet at the same time so it's about um Piper who is a rich 27 year old who doesn't know what she's doing with her life essentially <laughs> and she gets cut off by her stepfather because of a party she throws and she is sent to her birth father's hometown um, to basically reopen his bar that they was left to them when they were like w after he died and there she meets Brendan, who is a crab fisherman. And uh, he's very grumpy and dealing with the loss of his wife, too. Um, but I enjoyed this so much. It was so sweet. Like, Piper is very, like, positive, upbeat, and Brendan's very not. So it was funny seeing them interact. But also, the way their relationship formed was so genuine and I just loved that especially Brendan because he was like once he got in there he was like I'm in I'm all in like she's it I'm not like I'm not going anywhere and I was like bro I love that <laughs> but also yeah it was just super cute and I love these characters I think this is probably one of my favorite reads this year um overall I think Brendan is one of my favorite love interests I've read like for a while over a while so I just I love this for me because it was just so good um I would reread this that's how good it was for me and my last book that I read was Jade City by Fonda Lee. This was a long time coming because everybody in my group chat, Aaron, Monet, Cell, Mina, even Monty, have all read this book. And I was waiting because Chanel hadn't read it yet. So I was like, you know what? When Chanel reads it, I'll read it. Well, Chanel picked it up, so I was like, crap, now I'm officially the last one to have read this, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up. And I did. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I gave this three stars. I found it interesting enough to keep reading, but I didn't really connect with any of the characters. Um, I felt bad for Lan, because I really thought he was in a tough situation. Hilo was interesting because I don't dislike him or like him, but he was just kind of all over the place for me and I was like, this is a lot. Um, Anden, I don't know why he's here. <laughs> I feel like he just gets put into these plot situations and you're just like, why are you there? Because you're not adding anything, but you're also not taking anything away from this scene right now. And then the ending, I was like, okay, boy, like, can't deal with you right now. And then Shay, I think 
out of everybody, Shay was someone I kind of got invested in a little bit more because like she was trying to find her place in the family and figure out who she was without her family and stuff like that. But at the same time, I was like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> but yeah, overall the story was interesting. Hey friends, okay, so it's been like a month since I filmed the previous clip. Um, I've been adjusting to school and um, my student teaching internship. But also, I moved into a new place, so that was also an adjustment for me too. Um, you've probably seen it on Aaron's channel, but um, I'm actually rooming with Aaron from Booked and Busy. We are roommates. I've actually read more books since I filmed the previous clip, so I figured instead of trying to film two different wrap-ups or recent reads, I decided I would just make it one clip so that way it's easier overall and I can just go ahead and update y'all on everything I've read so far this fall. So those are the books I read in about like the August time frame and now I'm about to go into books that I've read from like September to the beginning of November. So the first book I read uh, was Beasts of Prey by Ayana Gray. Um, I actually really enjoyed this book. I gave it five stars. I thought it was really well done. I enjoyed the mythological aspects of the story and just her writing style and the characters. So this is about a girl who is basically in an indentured servant in this zoo with her mother and it's about a boy who is about to take a test to become one of the warriors of his quote-unquote tribe and for some reason magic is not I don't want to say it's not allowed it's just it used to exist in their world and then it just died and nobody really talks about it because it's kind of like forbidden if that makes sense so when you start the story, these two kids are like, they're in desperate situations where they're just really struggling. And um, circumstances happen where they decide that they're going to hunt down this creature in the forbidden woods that has been terrorizing their um, village for like years. I hope that was a good description. It's been a minute since I've done this, so I apologize if, if that wasn't the best. But I really enjoyed this. Um, there's another character point of view that you get throughout this book, and I think that's why I love this book a lot more than I was expecting, because there is an extra element um, of you wondering about the past of this village and how it got to the point that it's at when you start the story. It also does a really good job, I think, of discussing um, grief and mental health as well, um, especially in a black narrative because um, black culture sometimes has a bad reputation of really grasping mental health and accepting that it is not a weakness it's just um an aspect of kind of who you are if that makes sense so i enjoyed that um i also enjoyed the creatures because they were really really spooky so you really do get to meet some beasts in this story and the first one really had me like creeped out i was like oh goodness i can't like i really do not want to ever meet this thing in real life because i'm pretty sure i would just keel over because that's too much for me but i'm actually excited for the sequel and see what happens next because it does end on a really interesting note um but yeah i just really really enjoyed this um i feel like so i liked children of blood and bone but i feel like this added an extra element that children of blood and bone didn't have that i liked a little bit more though like the both stories are different obviously and like they have different um characters and whatever else which is good um but i feel like this just had like a little extra oomph in there that i liked a little bit more all right next i read the royals next door 
by Karina ha ha Hale, Holly, I don't know. But I think I gave this three stars. It was kind of okay. It's about this lady. She lives in, I think it's British Columbia or like a small island in Canada. And she's a school teacher and also like a romance podcaster where she like reads romance and she talks about them on her podcast and reviews them. She's pretty popular for the most part, but nobody really knows that it's her. She just keeps it on the down low because she's also a teacher. So she's like, I just would prefer not the like, not that she's embarrassed, but she just preferred that those two things of her life didn't cross over. Um, and she ends up becoming neighbors to the royal couple who just got married and are trying to escape like paparazzi and like negative stories about them so they move to this small island in a house next door to hers and from there she like starts to fall for their bodyguard this story was okay um it was like uh, i guess a fun read honestly it was weird though because it was so sick like you could tell this story was inspired by the story of prince harry and Meghan markle and not that I don't think like you should pull real life into your stories, but for me that aspect really just drew me away from the story. I don't know why, because like I love Prince Harry, Mary, Meghan Markle. Like I hate that they had to deal with all that racism. But this, the like literally when you read, when I was reading this, every aspect that was like revealed about this royal couple was just Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. And I just like, I didn't hate it, but it was just, it would have been better, I feel like, if she had made them like absolutely different. Because I felt like it was just me watching the news or like me reading the magazines or whatever. Like, I just didn't want to sit there and relive these people's story, if that makes sense. And the thing is, they weren't even the main characters of this story, but because like they, like, there were so many similarities, I couldn't help focus on that. Um, and not on the, like, actual main couple. So it just, it, it was just too much. Like, it drew, it definitely drew me out of the story. Um, it definitely lowered my enjoyment because I just didn't like that aspect. Um, overall. Like, there was, like, slight differences. Like, the the prince married a pop star um instead of like an actress like Meghan markle but it was still so similar like they were running from negative storylines and racism and the royal family didn't support them and all that stuff so it was just like not fun but um, overall, if you like that kind of thing, I definitely suggest that because this would be the story for you. I just couldn't really get over it, especially because the, the main character, she was just kind of whiny a little bit too in certain aspects. I don't know. Next, I read Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. Uh, this was a booked and busy pick her last for her last uh, live show for her book club. And me, and I think Monet from Life is Monet, and Chanel from Chanel Time all read this book for her. And I gave this three stars. It's a good three stars, though. Um, <laughs> when I tell you we all kind of rushed to read this, uh, I underestimated how long this book was going to take me to finish. But I did, like speed listen to the audio <laughs> so I don't know if that hindered me or not so this is like a very complex story so it's about this girl who's always had this she's an orphan and she's always had this special power to I guess make people do what she wants and so circumstances happen where she runs into this man kel and he introduces her to the concept of mistborns and 
the fact that the, they're actually real people who hold special abilities and they carry on this plot to help the rebellion in this society take down the overarching ruler, if that makes sense. I like, I can really only say that much because I don't really even know how to truly describe this story because it, it's so complex. But I still found it interesting. The beginning was definitely interesting, like learning who these characters were. Um, I will say the middle chunk was like, unfortunately kind of boring to me so i kind of tuned in and out during that moment so, like i tuned in enough to figure out what was going on but i didn't really stick for all the like my new details but i will say the ending was really interesting once their plan actually started to be put into motion it actually started getting interesting for me and that's why i gave it three stars it also made me not want to completely shut the door on reading the sequel i don't know when i'll do that i'm not in a hurry but i'm not completely shutting the door on that because the ending was interesting enough for me to feel like oh what's gonna happen next slightly so i don't know when that would happen but it's it's a thought in my head that i will keep there i think the plot was the most interesting especially again towards the end once everything picked up um i found it to be the most interesting because i'd never really read a plot like that before and i liked the fact that it took little details that were kind of dropped throughout the story and pulled them into the to the bigger picture at the end i kind of wish that we had gotten Kel's perspective because majority of this book is from Vin's perspective, the girl, but I wish we had gotten his perspective because the majority of the plan was his. Like he was the one kind of making um, moves and putting pieces together. So I wish we had gotten his perspective, not so he could have like spoiled the plan because obviously I think the the reason why the ending impacted so much on me was because i didn't have any idea that that was what was going to happen but maybe just giving little minute details to be like oh something is happening because just getting vin's perspective i feel like was what made it feel so like dry in the middle because she wasn't really doing much she didn't know that like the things that she was doing was like spurring his plan more and because she didn't know that we didn't know that so half the time we were like oh she's going to another ball like why does this matter overall i know that rhymed when really it like made the biggest impact so i just kind of wish we had gotten that little bit of perspective even if it was just like a, a casual chapter or two from him once in a while like i feel like that would have just helped a lot for me also i feel like okay so if you're a fan of star wars <laughs> like reading the story this plot this like this theme definitely gave me star wars vibes and i kid you not if i read somewhere that brandon sanderson is a big star wars fan it wouldn't surprise me okay next i read all of us villains by amanda foodie and christine lynn herman this is an arc that i received from tor teen um so thank you to them for sending me this this was one of my most anticipated reads for this year and it met my expectations even more it, i gave it five out of five stars it was creepy in the best way disturbing in the best way so it's about seven families who have to take part in this competition in order to gain control of the high magic that exists within their town every 20 years so this year that the book starts is the year of the next competition and all the families are deciding who their champions will be and honestly throughout the story there were in instances where i would feel like sympathy or pity for one of the characters and then they'd turn around and do something and i'd stop feeling that way and i'm like oh crap they're villains like i really can't forget that they don't let you forget that these kids like are villains ultimately and that they're they're in it to win it and so i think that's the best part of the story is because like literally they're villains and they live up to the name totally so it was intriguing the ending i kind of i didn't guess but i had an inkling but then it went above and beyond and still shocked me in other aspects that happened so i'm just so excited to get my hands on the next book i'm so sad i gotta wait another year because 
because <laughs> it's so good. But yeah, definitely recommend it if you're looking for a good spooky villain story because this is definitely it. These are not heroes, despite what some of them may think. Monet from Life with Monet also love this. And so me and her were texting back and forth about all the things happening. So yes, if that doesn't encourage you, I don't know what will. All right, so those are all the books I read recently hopefully you enjoyed this video let me know if you read any of these and if you liked them we could definitely talk about our thoughts uh without spoiling people in the comments <laughs> um if you have any comments questions concerns go ahead and leave that down below and if you want to see more videos from me please hit that subscribe button you're all sunflowers in a world full of weeds <laughs>